It was a great. So the, so the thing is, when God tells you something, do it quick. My friend John Prudian says, take it fast. Receive it fast. All right. So um, when, when I started traveling with Dr. Randy Clark, I just, I just wanted to be obedient to what was God wanted me to do. And, um, and I remember uh, after uh, quite some time, Randy finally pulled me aside because he was mentoring me, discipling during those, those first two years especially. And uh, then he said, you know, Paul, I want you to speak at least one time, at least every one of my conferences. And I was so honored. I mean, I said, wow, Randy, are you sure? I mean, Randy has some of the most amazing speakers I've ever heard at his conferences. Charles Stock, Bishop Garlington, Mark Sharona, uh, Reinhard Bonnke, uh, Bill Johnson, Heidi Baker. I mean, these are like generals of the faith for me. And, and like Todd said, sometimes I hear these people speak and I go, I'm not saved yet. You know, I need to get saved, <laughs> even though I'm kidding, you know. But, but so I said, so I said, Randy, thank you so much. And I go into my prayer closet and I shut the door and I go, oh, God. God, help me. God, help me. What am I going to do? God, what am I going to speak? Oh, God, what am I going to say? And the Lord told me this. He said, Paul, I want you to speak on the message of your life. And I knew exactly what God was talking about because the mess that God brought me through, he made into a message. And it might not be something I, I had to share on stage one day, but, but whatever God's bringing you through, whatever mess he's bringing you through, he's going to make it into a message. And you'll have authority to carry that message. And you know what? I could never preach your message, not the way you could. So value the mess that God's bringing you through. See the message. And the message of my life is called the power of God's peace. There's this word about the power of God's peace. If we can get this, we can bring revival to the nations. I, I grew up in an Italian-American uh, fo- uh, home and family. Um, uh, how many people lived in an Italian household? Hey, we're a little bit loud, mostly. Uh, my wife, she's from uh, Australia. She grew up in New Zealand, but, but originally from Australia. And uh, I remember bringing her over to my parents' house the first time. All my brothers and sister and their spouses came together. And, uh, and after, a few, uh, after a while, I look over, I see my wife shaking because we're all yelling at each other. I said, oh, honey, we're not mad at each other. This is just how we talk. You see, we talk over one another, and it builds and builds and builds and builds and builds. And, uh, and, and so uh, I tell you to say that, you know, in my house, growing up in my house, it was always loud. It was always rambunctious. It was always, there was never what you would call peace in the home. My, my father owned a successful business and, uh, in, in, uh, in the city of Philadelphia, and, and there was a point where he had bought, put a large down payment on an a, a upper, uh, upper middle class uh, suburban house. We moved out there, and his business tanked. And there were times where I would go to the water faucet and turn it on and no water would come out because they couldn't pay the bills. There were times, a few times a year, where the electricity would get shut off because they were juggling how to pay that bill. There was tension in the home. There was no peace that I could understand in the home. And my mom, today, she's an amazing intercessor. That's her gift, gifting. She's a great intercessor. But back then, she was a great warrior. She could worry about anything you could worry about. And if you didn't know what to worry about, she'd tell you. She'd be like, you're not worrying about this? You need to worry. I would worry if I were you. That's what I would do. So there was, I, I would go to church. We grew up in a Christian culture, and, 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 and I would hear, peace to you, peace be with you, peace unto you. And I thought, man, when is that ever happening? See, my understanding of peace was actually the world's understanding of peace, which is the absence of conflict. And in, my, and, and in full reality, being practical, I would look and say, man, there's always conflict. You know, even when, 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 even when there was nothing happening, technically, I was at peace. I was still worried about what was about to happen. You know, my car's working this week. I wonder if it's going to work next week. I can pay my bills this month. I wonder if I can pay them next month. I'm in right relationship with so-and-so and this and that. I wonder how long that's going to last. I mean, even when I'm at peace, I'm still worried about when I'm going to lose my peace. I mean, my idea of peace was fragile. It was easily broken. It was not powerful. It was something that, you know, I, I think... I don't know, there's a reason that 90% of our tombstones say, rest in peace. You don't get it till you're dead. <laughs> I don't want peace yet. Not yet. I mean, that, this is my reality of what peace was. But I want you to know that's not God's peace. See, God's peace is not the absence of conflict. conflict. God's peace overcomes the conflict, overcomes the chaos, transcends it. 